what's up welcome back to the worm it's shower time well it's almost shower time last couple of videos got out the uh, chainsaw mill milled a whole bunch of cedar i think first it was uh decking for what's going to be the shower floor and then i milled up some uh one and a half buys for the frame we got this thing knocked together and we're waiting still waiting for the uh concrete to finish setting Man, it is embarrassing that I use concrete, but I just couldn't think any other way to do it. So I think I may have enough wood milled up to frame this little short back wall. The front wall, as you guys, most of you know, I don't want any sides or a front on this thing. I just like it completely open. So when you shower, you've got a beautiful view, some fresh air. And then in the winter, I want to be able to slap sides on here, which I, uh, I'm going to make out of Sunbrella, like a really nice waterproof canvas, maybe put some... Uh, Clear plastic windows in it so i guess the roof is just going to be like this front to back one pitch i don't really want to waste a bunch of milled up lumber because that's a lot of work so i'm trying to find two logs that i can use the log will sit right here in the corner more or less and you know it'll be round like this but i want to use a chainsaw rip this side of the log and this side of the log up that way when it's on there, I can make the walls completely flat. I don't know how we'll do the uh, rafters and stuff, but I want it to all come out flush so the sides can just snap on there. So I got one log stuffed over here in a pile that I found that was pretty good. And I think you can find another uh, pretty good one down at the shooting range, some more trees that I want to cut down. So let's go have a look-see. And The nice one I've got up there starts at eight inches at the bottom and you go up eight or nine feet and it's only down to seven inches. So I kind of like to find something that sort of matches. This one here looks pretty good. It's got a little curve in the bottom, but about five or six feet up there, it's eight inches, and it doesn't look like it tapers down too much. So let's give that one a go. Got some rot. Hopefully that's just at the bottom. Yeah, not bad. If these were gonna be just legs holding up the front of this thing, it wouldn't make too big a difference how straight it was. I don't know if you can see the first maybe to here is kind of curved and then it's pretty straight for a bit and then it's got some weird stuff down there what do you think about there i cut it there and i cut it a little bit long in case i got to trim a little extra off See how close to eight and seven we got. That is seven and a half. Seven. That's perfect. And the wood looks like it's really good. I kind of promised myself that when I cut down trees from now on, I'm not going to leave any mess behind. I'm definitely not going to drag the chipper out just for the top of one small tree. Let's see, how can I get around feeling guilty about just making a mess and leaving it? Mm trim the branches and stack them okay yep Finding all sorts of junk under the snow. Who knows what this was saved for? I must have had big plans for it.
I found the trick with these to cut a flat edge off when you snap the line. Clearly the log has to be pretty straight. But also when you snap it, I'm going to try to cut it vertically so you have to lift the chalk line up like that and snap it straight down. Clearly if you pull it out to the side and let it go, it makes a weird line on there. So I think that's straight enough. It's kind of hard to see, but it should work. Doesn't look too bad. No huge chunks where I had to go back and trim it, so that's good. And just run a plane over that a couple times, it should be all right. I don't often like to peel these before trying to snap lines on them. If it's the wrong season, the inside of the, just underneath the bark there is, uh, see it's really wet. And you snap the line and sometimes, depending, sometimes you can't really get the chalk to stick very well. Because as you're cutting along, you're spraying chips out the back of the saw and it'll just take all the all the chalk right off the uh, right off the log. So this might be a disaster, we'll see. It's a pretty dirty log and I don't really like to leave the bark on it. Then do a bunch of chainsawing on it when you get all that dirt in there because it dulls the chain up so fast. So six of one, whatever, we'll see what happens. So interesting, can't quite figure this out, but look how easily this thing is peeling, not leaving any uh, bark on there at all. And I only cut this, what, a couple of weeks after I cut the last batch. Well, maybe it was more than that. I don't know, it's a seasonal thing. Sometimes you can peel them right off in one sheet like this. Whoop. That's on you. That one actually looks nicer. More consistent. See how close we got here. Well, it's actually not too bad. It's maybe a little over an eighth of an inch or so. Not going to make any difference for what I'm doing. It'd actually be quite easy just to take this down a little bit to make it squarer. You just take the chainsaw and kind of brush it. It works really well. But there's really no sense in doing that. That's not going to make any difference for this project. I'm trying to think. I don't think anything's really going to made up with this that's not going to be ground out and fit with the chainsaw anyway so yeah i think that's good enough structurally that's going to be uh fantastic that's about a six by six man it saves a lot of energy in an entire day not picking up every log and scrap bending down and doing it, it really saves the back good example of why it's important to snap the line straight down you can see from here the line looks pretty nice and straight you go up to the side and see it's not at all so if I'd have taken and pulled it out the wrong direction and snapped it we would have got a completely different line How much uh, of a house can you build with no foundation? Uh, still getting darker and darker. It's supposed to be some horrendous rain and wind for like five or six hours overnight. 
So I'm gonna have to pick all this stuff up in a couple hours, but still ought to do something right now, don't you think? Can't put the feet on there, so can't put the decking on there. Can't put the front, the front wall. Actually, let me see what I got left for uh, two by stuff, and we're gonna rip up some two by fours and build that back wall. Still gonna have to figure out how to keep it all from falling over. Figure out how to build the roof. Oh, I don't even have. Uh, it's a good thing I got another five or six or seven big logs there because I don't have any uh, sheathing for the roof. I guess that'll probably end up being cedar. Unless I can uh, chop up one of these big aspen trees. I do like using that for, I like using that stuff for floors really because it's so hard. It's great for roofs too because it splits and cracks but once you get it all nailed in place it's not that big of a deal. The only downside for a roof is that it's really heavy. Especially the way I use it, you know, still wet. <laughs> it's funny all these places that I build, all these weird things. Over time, like every month, they're getting considerably lighter as the wood dries out. So that's a bonus. Well, I got some scrap 2x4s. Sort of 2x4s. They're not uh, full ones, so I'm sure I can use them for something. This will be interesting. I haven't framed anything with uh, cedar. I don't know how it'll work. It's super, super light, especially the, uh, the heartwood. The sapwood wood's a little bit heavier, but... I don't know how it'll hold up, but since the uh, since that back wall will regularly be splashed with water, I think I might as well try try framing it all in cedar and see what happens. Yeah, let's just make a couple more, a couple more two buys. I really have an aversion. To ripping any of these nice boards down to three and a half inches if I can't get two of them out of here. I'm not going to waste a beautiful six inch, seven inch wide board if I can't get two. So I think I might just have this one. All the rest of them are probably just shy of being able to get two out of there. So we'll see, see how much of the wall I can put together just with the boards I got here. And then if I have to, I'll go mill up some more. Holy moly, I had to put everything away really fast last night. We got hammered, tons of rain, crazy wind. Now there's puddles all over again that uh, had already dried up. I only have one two by four that I made that's long enough for the top of the back wall. I was actually thinking I could use a something wider than that for the top of it, because then it'll be what the roof sits on, but that would be kind of like a shelf that sticks out at like five or six feet. Still, I'm not sure I've quite, I might have just barely enough to build everything. So I'm thinking, take what I got under here, seven or eight boards that are one and a half by some amount, probably at least six inches. I think I'm just going to lay all the rafters out for the roof. Just see if I've got enough uh, wood already made for it. And then whatever's left over, I can see if I can make into uh, framing for the back wall. And if there's not enough, I'll just have to go over and mill a couple more logs up real quick. Well, that's kind of enough actually. So this one will go between the upright logs and then all those will sit on top of it. Just cause it's got to hold a lot of weight and it's quite a long span. I think I'd like to mill up a fatter one. Get one of those giant logs over there, mill it up into one and a half buys. Take the middle slab out and put it, put it up at the top. If nothing else, it'll look really cool to have a like a 2 by 12 with the live edge on it hanging up there. Yeah, let's do that.
Ooh, that's a heavy sucker. Well, that's a bummer. There's a, a crack through the log and some imperfections right through the center of it, the dead center. You can see some of it down here. So that's not gonna work. That's not gonna be structural. I guess I'll just uh, mill the rest of this up into one inch boards. I can use it for the roof or for the floor or something. It won't really matter. And then I'll have to drag out another log and cut some big stuff. I could tell, I could, I could sniff it out that that's the log you wanted me to use, so, so I got it for you, alright? You happy now? Jeez. Alright, I'll chop this up, then we'll get back to building. Oh baby. Just wait to see these beautiful boards I got. That one was so pretty and perfect that I cut it even thicker, I went uh, full two inches. I just figured if you're going to go this big anyway, add another half inch, make it look really massive. And all this stuff's so light, it's not like, uh, it's not like adding a little weight to a str big structural piece is going to hurt anything. Check this sucker out. It's massive and beautific. 11 feet long, 2 inches thick. Can't weigh more than, I don't know, 20, 25 pounds or something. Got a couple gallons of wood sealer. They're probably a thousand years old that I found at a uh, second-hand store. I don't really seal anything, but I'm thinking this could end up being so pretty. I might go ahead and seal it. I'm just kind of, you know, I'm always curious to to learn by doing. I mean, clearly that's, you know, a better idea if you want this stuff to last forever, that you put wood sealer, or you paint it, or use oil or varnish or whatever, but. I'm more curious just to slop it on here and there and see, you know, if I put some cheap stuff on this one versus that one, how much longer that does this last? Does it keep it from graying? Does it make any difference with the bugs? Any of that stuff. So, I don't know, being that this is going to get wet on the inside a whole lot, maybe, maybe I'll just seal the inside of it just to see what it looks like. It's now been about 48 hours since I poured the concrete in those holes. You're definitely not supposed to mix concrete, pour concrete when it's freezing. <laughs> And having way too much water is not a good thing but it is continuing to get harder and i think since it was pretty deep down there i don't think anything froze i don't think anything's going to freeze i do think i'm going to have to give it a couple more days to set if you stood out stepped on it right now you'd leave a boot print i don't know maybe it's not going to set at all which is fine too i just have to i don't know sometime when i leave here pass a home depot or something i'll have to get some uh quick crete and dig those out It'll take a while to make up my mind whether or not cedar is good for framing, but it is quite warpy depending on the part of the tree it comes out of. This one was cut out of a really fat board, so just taking off one side of it, and that outside line, this side was ripped straight, and then all that was left is on the bark on this side. I just took the bark off that side, and I sighted down it again, and it, look how crookward it is. I just snapped another line on there straighten it back out cedars do kind of tend to grow in a spiral as they go up i don't know how much pine does that but 
I'm sure it's going to work out anyway. It's just, you know, you just got to have a shack to dump hot water on your head. That's all. finished I was actually uh, imagining something a lot shorter than this but since you got to pick the uh, pan of water up over your head you need I'm six feet so you got to have at least eight feet underneath there didn't want to be cramped so six foot back wall I think I milled up enough lumber for this project I couldn't even fit it all on here always better to have too much than too little I guess I do think this is the first product project that I've done that I milled all the lumber ahead of time or most of the lumber ahead of time and having no idea how many feet I needed I just milled up all the smallest logs that is a good stash right there still a little hesitant to put the back feet on this thing because uh, it's not I mean the concrete's pretty well set but it's not like a hundred percent so I just carved out these uh back corners they're just going to sit flat on a stump so they'll just be a what, like a 12 13 inch stump right there sitting in the concrete and this will sit on i'm not going to attach it or anything and because it's not going to be attached i'm just going to go ahead and put the floorboards on here i really want this to be able to drain pretty well i think i'll just uh leave a little bit of gappage between the boards and then figure out the draining later and see how i did the old shower i mean this was just a. Uh, it's just a pallet. I think we did this like the first month Tito and I were out here. We put this thing together really fast. There were cedar boards put on a pallet and then I just, what do you call that, siping? Just siped it with the chainsaw, which worked fine, but clearly it, it eventually kind of gets filled up with junk. So I could do plunge cuts like this all over the place. It would give you that non-slip feel and let the water drain. Who knows? We'll figure it out in time. Let's put the floor on. usually use log dogs and pound them in here to keep these in place while I'm ripping them, but I'm really liking using these clamps instead. So I think I'm going to cut them, rip them all on this side, and then start on the other side placing them. That way you can still have this work surface that I can clamp to easily. If you'll please excuse me, my Da Vinci library book is uh, due in two days, so i got to finish it up. You guys don't mind if I... Cool. Maybe we'll throw some temporary feet in here just so I can pound on this without it moving too much. So here's one that starts about the same width there and gets fatter at that end. So just put them like that and then snap a line on that edge and we won't waste much of anything. Might as well leave a gap in here, huh? Maybe a nail head-ish? Usually you build stuff with green lumber like this, you can expect it to shrink up a lot. Like if I had actually planed the edges of these, pushed them together, and then left them for a season, the crack would be at least that big. So of course, I could stick these things together up tight and let them season and dry out and the crack widen up. But this is going to be wet all the time, so I expect, I expect the crack will stay something like that. It's kind of hard to say. I 
I've only built one outdoor wilderness shower before, which I guess is probably one more than most people, but still hard to say what this thing will do. Well, that worked all right, as far as I can tell. I mean, maybe it didn't, and I just don't know it yet, but it's blended. Well, alas, you uh, you, you kind of have to follow the directions on concrete, turns out. Can't pour it with way too much water, can't do it when it's below freezing, just like the label says. So I had to come out here uh, yesterday in between rainstorms, I brought some faceting quick creed out here, and now we're pretty well set. So, let's see, we got to find some cedar poles, put some uh, cedar rounds in there. Certainly got enough down stuff out here. Man, you gotta you gotta stop every like three months and spend a week just cutting up junk that falls down that blows down out here. Look at just a mess everywhere. Ah, here we go. These'll do. These got chucked aside as firewood because they're nice and bent. But I just need a couple of, I don't know, whatever they are, one foot long uh, rounds to stick underneath the corners. About time to sharpen that one. Gonna take some trimming.
That is beautiful. so much slippier once you peel them. I'm not big on that whole measure twice cut once thing. I'd like to cut a couple times and then measure it. But it's a good thing uh, it's a good thing I remeasured because it'd be a lot of work to make another one of these beams. This is the the big beam going across the front, two inches thick, and I almost almost cut the notch wrong. So hey, I mean measuring's not all bad, I guess. All right, I have to pull those down in order to cut the tops off and notch them out. Would have done that ahead of time, but that would require planning, and I don't like to do that. So the way I usually do this, the roof is I'm going to throw this back wall on here, and then I'll show you this little special tool I have for figuring out roof pitches. This is the uh, re retractable version of the uh, roof pitch calculator. So oh yeah, I'll put that back wall on there. We'll just hold this up and say uh, something like that looks good. Then we'll quack those off. Well, these front poles look way too tall, but that's only when you're standing down there. When you step up two feet, it looks pretty reasonable. How's it look from back there? Pretty good? I think it's pretty good. You stand in the middle, you can still pick your, head, your hand up all the way. be easier to cut these notches if the thing was completely square if this was a four by four or six by six Oh, won't that be a nice fit right there? That's just gorgeous. Yep, that's the test. You, as long as it didn't come down and you pound it a little bit, it, it should be good. Trailer is great as a trailer, but it's also great saw horses.
Pretty decent fit. All right, that looks really cool. I look a lot. The next trick that needs to be done before I can put a roof on it is figure out how to brace this thing because these obviously are temporary. Those come off of there, the whole thing's a big wobble fest. I was thinking I would do some kind of braces like here to there and like here to there. But then I just had a thought. I was looking at these suckers and also thinking, not that any of us out here are very bashful, but that back wall really only gives you privacy like if you had a bench here in your shower you've only got privacy to there and if you were showering here i think probably the gas tank would go there and the burner will go there you wouldn't have very much privacy so here's my thought it just just popped into my head I'm thinking about doing a brace from here all the way down to here and then walling all that in so when you're standing here, you'd still see out because the bottom isn't covered up. All the top would still be open. You'd see all this and all this. Grr. It got cold again and the camera keeps dying. Anyway, what do you think? Could that look cool? I think that would look pretty sweet and it would be incredibly strong that way. Otherwise, I got a Mickey Mouse together, some little braces that I don't think will look all that cool. I think I'm just going to do it. I think, uh, you know, five seconds of thinking and 30 seconds of explaining. That's the way to go. Yeah, you guys like it. I can hear you screaming. Do it. Do it, dummy. Actually, I got uh, today and a little bit of tomorrow before we get another several day storm. So I think I might throw the roof on here first. That's kind of the most important thing. I can leave those braces on for now. And if the roof's on it, then at least I can leave some tools and stuff underneath here during the storm. Plus, I'll use up all the good, uh, really long one by cedar lumber for the roof. And then whatever's left over, I can use however I want for the walls and the back. Yeah, roof first. That's better. That'll be a back saver.
don't know why I just ripped that with the circular saw. That was a waste of batteries. What a dope. Gonna run out of lumber for sure, as always. You don't really appreciate it when you build stuff with store-bought lumber, but when you make it all yourself, you really realize just how much material that is you go through on a small project. Got a few more long ones. I'm trying to piece together even some short ones up here, which is a pain in the butt because I got to keep climbing up here and down to cut everything. But I got a few more skinny long ones, and then, yeah, I'm probably going to have to mill up one or two more logs. I'll probably have to end up milling up all the logs I have just to do the walls and stuff too. I guess I felt like I had a ton of logs, but then when you do the all the framing and everything too, all out of the same wood, it just doesn't go quite so far. You almost fell off again. You, <laughs> you guys got to be safe, you know? Safety for sec. At least safety third, okay? Well, the downside this morning is that it's 20 degrees, but the upside is I found some more lumber I had milled. Didn't have enough room on the trailer to bring all that over, so that's good. It's another, what, six or seven boards? Oh, uh, this also means that my batteries aren't gonna work for the planer and the skill saw. Actually, I did have breakfast in the man cave and had the heat on. I think I got a couple batteries in there. is perfect I mean that's the only way I build stuff absolute perfection right not the biggest fan of doing a ruse. So it always feels good to have it done, especially when you have to wear inappropriate sli slippy boots and you're out in the middle of nowhere. Falling off a roof out here would be uh, a little terrifying. Holy moly. Stopped to eat a little lunch, seemed like the right time, and I accidentally fell asleep for almost two hours. <laughs> oh, that was a deep one. Well, in my most humble of opinions, that thing looks awesome. I'm super happy with it. I think that's gonna be a fantastic place to get clean. I really like the way the unfinished rafters look, the live edge. And of course, cedar always looks fantastic on roofs, ceilings. This uh, roof, like, like most things I build, I use the lumber and kind of fit the building to the lumber. And I think this roof ended up about a 512 pitch, which is, Nice because I can walk on it. Ideally for snow and stuff, you'd want it a little bit steeper. The good thing is there's a whole bunch of weight that's not even there to start because it's all cedar lumber. It probably weighs a third as much as if I built it with aspen like I usually do. Like you should do pine rafters and aspen uh, roof sheathing. 
yeah, I'm sure that Aspen weighs easily three times as much. So, I mean, that's several hundred pounds not up there anyway. Man, I think they must have put in a new airport around here or something. Or maybe they're doing those uh, ringworm tours from the air. I don't really get that many planes flying over and it's been a steady stream today. Oh yeah, you can see they got the telephoto lenses. Sup? Welcome to the worm. Well, since it's gonna rain uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna cut this off here. I gotta spend the rest of the day doing the oil change on my, uh, what do you call that, my sunburnt steed. I'm gonna try to fit that in right now for the rest of the day and then the next couple days I get to sit in the man cave, edit videos, and take a lot of naps and I can freaking use it. So more than likely in the next video we'll get this thing closed in, get the sides with those cool diagonal walls on there at the back. You know, there's something else I kind of need to get to and it's just uh, something that showed its face in the last uh, day and a half. It's uh, quite apparent now that there was snow on the ground when I first built this uh, floor in here because now my one step, I think I just chucked that there and it was, it was like maybe six inches short of stepping up inside and just in the last two days since it melted, I almost can't do that step up. I know, I know you're like, it's not really that far, but I got old man knees. So it's, that's the worst thing is stepping up real high like that. So I might have to, might have to take a couple days and build some steps here. You know, I never built steps on the gazebo either. Maybe I'll make steps for this and then see how they go together, how I like them, and then go down there and put them on the, on the gazebo. Whatever, gotta get the shower finished first. One thing at a time, God. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week. Maybe we'll get clean. Can't come too soon, right? See ya.